So since we're in full quarantine mode and I, uh, as of yesterday, joined the Fun Employment Club, um, I decided that why not just try to make stuff while I'm basically waiting to see how my life turns out. Um, so I am going to try to use this thing, it's called an arsenal. Um, I feel like probably most of my photographer friends and colleagues have gotten Facebook ads for it or Instagram stories. I personally am a sucker for buying things from those ads so that's probably why i have this it is the arsenal this is the logo in the box so basically what this is is um like an intelligent camera assistant is what it calls it it says unlock the full potential of your dslr or mirrorless camera arsenal's ultralight hardware uses state-of-the-art ai to take better photos in any condition so i mean from the way it makes it seem on the website, it kind of makes it sound like it can do everything for you, um, which is perfect for a lot of people who want to like take photos of stuff but don't really want to feel like learning a whole lot about it. Um, so I'm going to try this out on my 5D Mark II because my like remote shutter doesn't work on that camera that I have. So honestly, if this thing works, it'll be pretty nice. So let's see what this looks like um, and see how hard it is to set up. Great, so I'm gonna see if I can do this with one hand because I don't have the tripod out. This is what the actual little doodad looks like that connects to the hot shoe on your camera. So up here, obviously, when I have two hands to do it, I will put it on there. It's honestly super light. Obviously, it's smaller than my hand, so that's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, so let's see. I've actually obviously opened this box before. So I'm missing like the wire because I wanted to charge it before the video. Thanks for choosing Arsenal. Okay, so I actually think that they sent me somebody else's also, which I think is kind of funny. Brent, Merry Christmas. Love you, Dad. So thanks, Dad. Sorry, Brent. I hope that you still got one. You got mine or something. So we have our little uh, power cube there or whatever. And then the micro USB, I think it is. I have a Canon. They have different cords for all the different brands of cameras. So let's see if I can get this thing set up. So obviously I have my little backdrop set up behind me. This is also nice because my apartment's kind of messy. Um, but this is my first time opening this color and I'm super hyped because I've really always wanted blue. So let's hope I can make something cute. All right, so we are gonna go to witharsenal.com slash start. Canon. I have charge. I already charged it before because I wanted it to work. Start with a blank memory card in your camera. So that is the first step. Let's see if this perfect. It's blank. Love that. Good internet connection. Xfinity. I pay $120 a month. Oh, family. Fully charge your camera's battery. Okay. If your camera Wi-Fi is enabled, please disable it for use with Arsenal. This can confuse your phone when it switches between Arsenal's network and your home Wi-Fi. Okay. I have my Wi-Fi off on my 5D Mark II. Arsenal uses a mobile app to control and update the Arsenal device from your phone. So I think this is what it's going to look like on iPhone um, on the App Store. It's got the same A without the line in the middle logo, so I'm going to assume that is the right one. And it looks the same as on the website, so... Okay, so mount Arsenal to your camera or tripod. Hold the device with the Arsenal lettering is on top and facing you when you're behind the camera, okay? Line up Arsenal's foot behind your camera, hot shoe, the hot, okay? Slide Arsenal into the hot shoe, okay, that's all this hot. So it doesn't screw in or anything, I guess it just wiggles on there and it can fall out. But I guess you don't really need to, it's not going to really be in your hands, you're not going to be moving or turning with it because then you would just use the camera controls. So I guess this is fine. Connect Arsenal to your camera's USB port. This little guy's got to go from the Arsenal to the camera. So the 5D Mark II has it on like the left side, has all the ports and everything under these little rubber cover things. Um, I think it's gonna be the one on the right, yes. Also, I just realized the Arsenal has a charge port on both sides, which is very convenient. I think that's it. Alright, 
Only arsenals left USB port. Okay, here we go. Left USB port can talk to your camera and be sure to connect your camera to Arsenal's left side. Okay, well, I did that anyway because my USB port's on the left of my camera, um, but for people that might have other models, I think it's saying that Fuji is the only one, but that would have the ports on the right side. So just make sure that you're plugging it into the left so that we can actually communicate with your camera and phone. Link Arsenal with your phone app. Turn on your camera. Turn on your Arsenal device by briefly pressing and releasing the power button. You'll see a small green light turn on. There we go, cute little green light right there. It's got this cool blue on the side. It reminds me of PlayStation a little bit. So turn on your camera, done. Turn on your Arsenal device, done. Open the Arsenal app on your phone. This is what it's gonna look like. It doesn't say to press get started, but I feel like that's the only way, okay? And it connected and sent me to this screen. Now what? Is that the live view? Oh, okay. That was an easy connect. So here's the phone, here's the camera, obviously. Um, it doesn't really seem like things are, I guess, the same. I don't really see the shutter speed at 4,000 on here. Oh, duh, right here, one of 4,000. So I think I kind of can just like play with this, or maybe not. I'm not in live mode, but it's just focusing on whatever it's facing over here, which is literally the trash in the box, um, and trying to focus. Let me just see what happens if I press this. Mirror up, pause to reduce vibration. Let's just go to manual. Let's try this. So, so far, I mean, so far, so good. Let me move this box. So I think since I'm on live view on my phone, it goes away from the camera. I can't see inside the viewfinder with this. So I'm looking at everything on here. Smart Labs, what does that mean? So, oh, that's for a time lapse, obviously. Okay, so, I mean, I think if I press there, will it focus there? Yeah, so it totally didn't focus. And I have found on the 5D Mark II in the first place, live mode is like not good for focusing. So, um, it definitely isn't exactly in focus as you can tell on here as well, um, but it definitely did work. So I'm gonna try to just get going on the portraits and see if I can figure this thing out that way. Step one, you say we need to talk. He walks, you say sit down, it's just talk. He smiles politely back at you You stare politely right on through Some sort of window The live view is definitely very delayed um, Obviously you can't expect it to be like lightning speed But I think they said you could be up to like 10 feet away And I'm like a foot and a half away and it's really slow So I can't imagine what it would be like actually really far Just took one photo, and that's how long it took for it to actually load, um, or at least come back to live view. You can kind of see me moving around, but if I move to the camera, then you won't be able to see it. Let's see. I'm curious to see how actually sharp these are gonna be, because obviously on the camera, on my phone, it looks terrible, but maybe it'll look better not on my phone. Oh, it looks way, obviously way better on my camera. Oh, okay, so these actually don't look too bad. Okay, I was I was being a little harsh at the start because the res is so low on my phone. I thought that it wasn't focusing, um, but so far it did. However, this lens is a little bit too close. So I'm gonna see if I can switch to the 35. Not read weird with a different lens or something. I'm not really sure. All right. Let's get back to business. So basically, I mean, I'm controlling all of the, everything from the app, which is actually very convenient and that's very fast. Um, it's just the actual live view itself, which is really slow and the focus is really slow so far. Maybe once I get a little better at it, it'll be easier. Um, so I guess that is one kind of downfall to this is that technically it's in live mode, so everything moves a little bit slower. Um, for what they said to use it for, which is more like landscape stuff, I guess you don't have to worry about that as much. Um, especially if you're stacking, it might be okay, but for this, it's like, come on, 
It's taken a little bit longer than I like, but it's also amazing technology, so I'd like to acknowledge that as well. Previews are actually not bad once they load. Not too low res in comparison to what it looks like when I'm live viewing it. Um, I'm going to take a few more shots just to give myself something to actually edit. I also don't usually short shoot portraits horizontally, so I'm taking an exceptionally long time to frame anything because I'm so used to having so much vertical space, but it's all a learning experience. So I'm gonna just see if they're even in focus on my computer. Obviously looking at that little screen, especially without my glasses on. Uh, don't know if I would actually be able to tell they're in focus. I have that problem a lot. Um, I usually do shoot with my glasses on and I feel like sometimes it looks like something's in focus on the camera screen and then I come look at my computer and it's not in focus and I'm really bummed. Okay. Let's just take a look, see here. I'm just going to preview all of them. Obviously, I have a couple of those testers from when I first turned it on. Um, but, ah, that looks terrible. Huh. That is strange, those first two. I don't know what's going on with that, but sweet. Okay, so that one, my, my left eye, technically the right eye is like, Pretty, pretty in focus. It's in preview, so I'm not sure if maybe that's why it won't let me zoom in very much. And that one's nicely in focus. But then we have situations like this, and I'm not really sure what's going on with that. It's pretty well focused. This one, you can see my phone. This one's in focus. This is what kind of weirds me out though, is like, I don't really understand what's happening with this. Um, that definitely to me would be like on the cons list. I'm going to try to open this not in preview, maybe just in Photoshop since it's a raw file um, and see if maybe that does it something different. But like, yeah, these are all a little bit strange here. Don't trust anything of anyone with no sun. See what happens if I open the image and I just don't even worry about it anymore. To be honest with you, I did use not a great compact flash either, but like that's actually awful. And it shows up in here at regular, so I'm a little bit confused by that. Um, That is so strange that I can't even look at any of these. I wonder if it has to do with the card, honestly, which kind of sucks too, but I just don't understand why they all the previews would look fine if there's an issue with the actual camera. Like what? <laughs> Why it's happening, um, but yeah, I don't know. 
I'm gonna blame the arsenal for now because I've not ever had this problem before either. Okay, so it's see I mean it seems like at least the previews are coming up better. I guess let's just see if this works. Oh, okay, sick. So that's weird, but it was weird on the card and then it worked when I um, imported it actually onto my computer. So I guess maybe it has to do with the memory card. So I mean, the focus on this is honestly pretty nice. I would say like the eyes pretty, pretty crisp. And obviously that has a lot to do with the lenses as well. But I mean, I would say the arsenal is actually pretty decent decent investment. I mean, it did cost $150, so I don't know if I would necessarily say it's worth that, especially um, because there are a lot of apps you can get that will link to your cameras and you can just kind of do the same thing I just did, but with an app on your phone. Um, I do think that it's worth having more so for people that will want to go outside and shoot landscapes and stuff. It definitely is a cool gadget to have. I do foresee this um, being like an early version of kind of what's to come for cameras in the future. I think that cameras probably soon will have built-in features that you can just kind of control from your phone. I'll probably keep using it just because it's what works for me now. And honestly, I might do another video like down the road if I end up using it a lot um, when I know how to use it a little bit better. And so that'll be kind of nice. So I'm just gonna go through and maybe like retouch some of these photos and see how it goes.